Welcome to our prayer together, based on the diocesan scripture sharing material that you will find on the diocesan website, candle.ie, and on our parish website. This week, we will be using the prayer of the fourth Sunday of Lent. The Gospel reading is from St. John and tells us about how Nicodemus visited Jesus. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have sent Jesus Christ among us to be the light of the world. At this time of year, the light returns. The days stretch bit by bit. Our world sees new life and growth. Help us to look to your word and recognize Jesus, your son, as the light of the world, the light that overcomes our darkness. With Mary we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said to Nicodemus, The Son of Man must be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, people have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everyone who does wrong hates the light and avoids it for fear their actions should be exposed. But the person who lives by the truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what they do is done in God. In the scripture passage, we see that Nicodemus has come to Jesus. He's impressed by Jesus and the works that he's done. But at the same time, he's perplexed. He knows that he's come from God, that is obvious from his works. But what message does he bring from God? That is what is really bothering Nicodemus. What must he do? How must he respond to God's message? We all feel a little bit like that from time to time. What road should I take? Should I take this job or not? Ought I think about priesthood or religious life or not? Ought I marry this person or not? So many choices. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. And that's more than just the time at which he visits. He comes in the night of human uncertainty, in the darkness of human difficulty. He comes in the night of that great question that all honest people ask. What does God want of me? Yes, this man has come from God, and so Nicodemus decides to ask him. And Jesus begins by reminding people of the story of Moses and the serpent in the desert. During their time in the desert, 
the people were attacked by serpents. Anyone who was bitten by a serpent risked serious illness and death. Moses prayed and was instructed by God to fashion a bronze serpent. Those who were bitten by the serpents were to come and look at this bronze serpent and they would recover. The image of the bronze serpent was the image of God's saving power for his people in the desert. But now it is different because God's saving love is shown in the Son who has come among us. This time, people who are bitten by the serpents of human weakness and hurt, bitten by the serpent of self-doubt or fear, bitten by the serpents that question us and hinder us, can look at the Son who comes from God with a simple message, the message that God loves us so much that he sent his Son among us, so that everyone who believes in him can come to the fullness of life with God. God's Son did not come for judgment. Judgment is for us to make. Certainly we are often confused and unsure, but often we start with the wrong question. It is not so much in tormenting ourselves about various things that we respond to God, but rather in looking to the light that has come into the world with Jesus Christ. This is the first thing to be done, to choose Christ, to choose the light, to live by that truth, and then to do everything in that light. So I will read that passage again for you. And as I read it, you might listen for the words or the phrases or the images that speak to your heart. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the son of man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, people have shown that they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it for fear that their actions should be exposed. But the person who lives by the truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what they do is done in God. Gathered in the light of faith, in the light of Jesus Christ, we pray for ourselves and the world around us. We pray for the blind and for those whose sight is impaired. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. We leave with God all the areas of our life that are in darkness. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask God to give us a renewed sense of wonder of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, that place where our darkness can come into the light of God's mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We leave with God now the many prayers of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With confidence and hope, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Some people will be familiar with a book by J.R.R. Tolkien called The Two Towers. And at the end of the book, there is a siege. The heroes have been driven into the very last refuge of the fortress. They have held out for almost three days. Now the dawn is breaking and they hear the enemy battering at the door. They are too few and too badly wounded to defeat them. Their situation seems utterly hopeless. It seems inevitable that they will simply skulk in the darkness until their doom falls upon them. A few rays of light begin to fall into the darkened room and they begin to take courage. No, they will not sit and wait for the inevitable. They will ride out and face the rising sun rather than sit and wait in misery. In a flurry of excitement, they mount their horses and ride out to face their enemy, riding towards the morning sun. And what happens next? Before such bravery, their enemies flee. Also, from the east, illuminated by the rising sun, reinforcements arrive. Their decision to ride out into the light rather than skulk in the darkness has made all the difference. Christ challenges us to do the same in the Gospel this week, to move out of our darkness of self-doubt and discouragement, to face the rising sun that comes from God. Mm -hmm.